basics of title check. So now say you are sitting in a meeting with a seller and you, you are fixing a price for a builder floor. Yeah. Hello and welcome to this new video. So this is going to be one of the most important things and uh, this is just going to be such a lifesaver for so many people because how to check the title of a property or how to basically do a basic check. I mean you go for a meeting, you close a deal with someone, you want to see a little bit of the documents and most people don't understand how to do that and so I'm trying to make it easier for you just see uh, and learn from this if you have any questions or anything just feel free to comment on the video or just ask me personally also I'm very open to helping you out all right so before we begin there are a few definitions that you must know the first thing is deed we keep saying sale deed conveyance deed and so many other deeds so a deed is basically a legal document that shows ownership transfer etc you know so say you you sell the property to someone else you want to sign some papers that's called a deed you take a property and rent it's called a lease deed you know rent deed simple yeah we keep saying we're checking the title how is the title of the property what is title title is all the paperwork that proves clear ownership of a property for example if you come to me and say prove me that this is your property i'll say okay i'll show you the paper so those papers the whole set would mean the title how it traveled from the first owner to me you know and and any other paperwork in between if it's sold 50 times in between so all those 50 uh, ownership transfers are part of the title if there is any problem in any of those transfers the title is kind of defective and there is this term called as leasehold so when a property is held by way of a lease, we call it leasehold. When you first actually like DDA gave out properties or, or not gave out really, <laughs> people bought the properties from DDA. Uh, initially it was a leasehold. So you got a lease deed. Uh, it was called a perpetual lease deed. It was for 99 years. And later on you could get it converted into freehold. But till it is leasehold, it is not really full and forever ownership. You're actually giving rent and it's like a, it's like a rent you taken a property on rent that you can build and all that yeah banks usually do not give a loan on leasehold properties in delhi and that's why then it's converted to freehold then you pay uh, certain charges and all that to dda and then it becomes a freehold property it means you have a complete forever ownership so these are very simple things and nothing complicated about it you can you can look up these words in a dictionary also i mean this is that's where i got these definitions from <laughs> all right so you must use a competent lawyer always use him uh, when you want to check the title i do not take this full responsibility just by mere way of making this video tomorrow you say oh I, I bought this property after watching a video and the title wasn't full always take help of a competent lawyer i'm not a uh, i'm not a lawyer and you know so i already showed you a disclaimer there but having said that you need to have some basic knowledge like you know you need to know a little bit about health and how to fix uh, small illnesses you know, if you get a cold or something, you don't have to be a doctor for that, right? Similarly, you should know a little bit about the, about the title. Uh, you can always check the basic title chain, like how did this guy become the owner? You know, you should be able to see that. It's a very simple thing. There would be a deed, a document showing this person sold to this person. You can check the names, you can check the details, uh, the address, the area of the property, everything would be there. Now, when you use a lawyer, you should use a, like a specialist of that area, you know. So, for example, uh, you're buying a property in South Delhi, use a, use a lawyer who's specializing in South Delhi. Don't go to a criminal lawyer because he's your friend, so he can also check the documents, you know. Uh, I mean, you can show it to him if you really want to, if he's a well-wisher, but I'm just saying, use someone who specializes in that. If you're buying something in Gurgaon, maybe show to someone in Gurgaon who does the work there, you know. If you're buying something in... Ahmedabad then go to an Ahmedabad lawyer you can always use a property lawyer in Delhi also just for a general check but there could be so many local things that only he can guide you know the, the local guy can guide and you know this is sometimes a problem don't don't hire those lawyers or just try to make it look like they're doing something special you know or they create problems and they raise useless objections I mean you know many things may not be 100% but still the title may actually be correct <laughs> you know, so in very old uh, documents, you would see some Mr. Agarwal sold a property to somebody else. 
Now the spelling of Agarwal might change from deed to deed. These are all errors one can say, but does it really matter? You know, and there are there are certain things which don't really matter. They would be nice to have, but if they're not there, it's okay. You know, you want to do a deal. You want to get the property or sell the property or buy the property or something. You want someone who expedites that process. I'm not saying he should palm off everything which is not okay as okay. That's not needed, but you know there is a there is a bit of common sense to use there so use a lawyer of that area who who can really help you and um, you know save you and protect you at the same time but also help you uh, go through it properly maybe he can give you an extra document to be signed by the seller if needed to kind of cover up any anything that doesn't seem 100% all right so we're going to go uh, to the basics of title check so now say you're sitting in a meeting with a seller and you, you are fixing a price for a builder floor or a coty or whatever it is and now um, there are a few things you need to clarify with him first of all does he have all the original documents with him does he have his own sale deed or if the previous sale deed he has does he have those originals nothing has been lost and uh, if it has been lost it's okay it can be handled i mean uh, it can be shown to a lawyer and there are ways to handle it there you can give a public notice there's an fir to be done if they might have already done it or you may not want to buy such a property that's up to you but i'm saying it can be handled but just clarify that in the meeting sir you have the originals it's a very simple question to ask he says yes i have all the originals nothing is lost excellent sir let's uh, go ahead now so uh now since you're sitting in the meeting and he's there he's and maybe he offers you know you want to see the papers you say yeah let, let me have a look you know it's always good to have a look but don't insist or demand that i must see the originals right now before we do the deal first do the deal decide on the price then maybe ask him do you have the originals we can take a look if he says he doesn't have the originals right now you set up a different time or you say okay when we sign the agreement to sell and give you a larger chunk of money we would like to see your originals which is which is fair you know usually a person does not have his original documents with him they are with uh, they are in a bank locker or something also if he's taken a loan he will not have the original documents with him he will have uh, the documents will be with the bank but he will have a document from the bank saying what all originals he has so you can see that because the originals you probably going to do an agreement to sell pay him some money and then he's going to get it off from the loan and get from the bank now now when you're setting up uh, in the in the meeting when you are settling on a price say you say okay we're buying a property for 7 crores good be very clear when you give a token amount that we're going to take this set of documents and show it to a lawyer even if you've seen all the documents in detail in the meeting you still say i am going to show it to a lawyer and if the lawyer uh, agrees everything is okay sir we'll go ahead otherwise you return the money and then this deal would be off or the lawyer may demand something else which is uh, which comes up then we'll request you you know th these are the usual things you must say in the meeting then and there all righty so you're sitting in the meeting and you want to have a look at the papers and understand what it is so check the last title deed like his sale deed basically so say you're buying a builder floor so when he bought the builder floor he got a sale deed in his name just see that you know so uh, So, so the, the best thing in that sale deed is that we give you a whole sequence of how it traveled from the first owner to this owner it could have been sold 20 times one time three times whatever it is it will show okay it was allotted to mr gupta then mr gupta got it freehold then it then he sold it to mr arora mr arora sold it to mr chandok and mr chandok sold it to mr agarwal and this is mr agarwal sitting in front of you so you understand okay this is how it traveled at least the basic thing is you want to understand how he became the owner okay now let's take a very simple example now it could be that uh, let me make my face smaller all right good now let us say the original owner bought a freehold land from dlf you know so some of these lands were uh, plots were freehold they were not uh, Uh, leasehold and then convert it to freehold so the simple example would be say gk2 for example dlf sold it so it was all freehold land so say say somebody bought it from dlf and he is now selling to you say the entire plot of 500 square yards or whatever 
so you see that sale deed you check okay mr arora who is sitting in front of you or mr gupta who is sitting in front of you his name is there on the sale deed as the buyer good uh, his, his photo would also be there uh, you check the size the plot size of the property the address of the property say you are buying uh, s777 in gk2 just making up an address if it's your address i'm sorry i didn't mean to but i don't think there are 777 plots so i i took this number so s77 s777 you check, check there okay this is there name mr gupta is selling you mr gupta's name is the plot size is 550 square yards it is also there so these things which have been informed to you must match now some broker might have told you uh, knowingly or unknowingly that okay we are we are uh, helping you buy this property this is 550 square yards and and you are discussing the price of 550 square yards for say 30 crores or whatever now uh, it turns out in the sale deed it is only 460 square yards it would be a huge problem maybe it is 545 square yards okay not that big a problem maybe it is 555 square yards good slight bonus there i guess so it's not a problem yeah but but you must check that the size is that sometimes uh, and, a, and a lot of times uh, people assume that this whole lane of properties is 500 square yards and they're actually 450 so just check that and let's see okay so so the first stage is like this is a very simple thing he bought from dlf and is selling to you so it's a very easy thing to see okay so he bought the property and he's selling to me fine there is no chain as such there like not sold many times now there could be a case where the property has been sold a few times now say the original owner sold to mr gupta and uh, mr gupta sold to the current owner say mr arora who is sitting in front of you so now we need to see three sale deeds the first one would be when the original owner bought from dlf the second would be from this this uh, second owner who's who sold to mr gupta you know so the first was actually dlf so dlf sold to the original owner and the owner sold to gupta mr gupta then sold to this mr arora maybe so there are these three sale deeds so he would give you a copy of these three three sale deeds and either any other documents in between but you can see that you know you you can you can now say you taken all that documents with you you given to your lawyer and you taken them home but you also want to study it so this is what is there to study there are three sale deeds three times sold any other documents in between maybe you can look at that also but we're taking a simpler example right now where only sale deeds were done nothing else was involved so these are just three sale deeds again just check the address name plot size all that that should also be there now there could be that one of these owners was not available in india or he gave a power of attorney to one of his family members to sign on his behalf so those power of attorney's copies would also be needed of there or if there was any agreement to sell done which is mentioned in the sale deeds so that would also be needed the copies of that will also be needed now comes the heavy lifters some cases can be very complicated to you you know to understand but they are not necessarily incorrect so that's where your lawyer's help comes in you consult your lawyer he'll help you understand what what this is now if the land was originally leasehold which is which is the case with most of delhi uh, the conversion papers are called conveyance deed you know uh, they would be there so the conveyance deed would be there or any leasehold transfers so uh, what i mean by leasehold transfer so say uh, mr gupta got a perpetual lease from dd in his name say he was the first buyer so mr gupta got a perpetual lease in his name now before the freehold he could have sold it to somebody else the way it was sold was there was a agreement to sell which was registered and there was a power of attorney sometimes a will some other documents made so all of that set would be one transfer so say mr gupta sold to mr arora and he did a agreement to sell power of attorney will um, or whatever else was involved so that would be there and then say mr arora got it freehold so then the conveyance deed would be in say mr arora's name or it could be in mr gupta's name in some cases depends on how how they got it done it could be through attorney a lot of things can get involved there's nothing wrong with that even if you can't understand it there's nothing wrong necessarily it's not your field so maybe you don't understand but the lawyer can help you or somebody who understands the property trade well he will understand there could also be inheritances say mr gupta was the one who got it from uh, dda and then uh, 
unfortunately say he expired and so the property went to his sons one of the sons uh, might have given up his right and 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 so the second son just became the complete owner or there could be various things this is all very normal there could be a court case brothers could have gone to the court that i want this more share the will they said there was a will and he said no i don't agree with the will they went to the court there was a case and there was a settlement all of this is very normal the, the, these things happen so it's not a minus point in the property just make sure your, your lawyer goes through those documents and makes uh, make sure that there is there is no nothing left out there in terms of the title uh, you need to clarify to the owner again like the when you when you take the document then if sir if there is anything else the lawyer asks will let you know especially in these cases where there was a lot of leasehold transfers and if there was a number of transfers done or um, you know there was a court case or inheritance was involved you know so uh, in that case you need to let the lawyer study you know so usually they are, they come out fine but if they don't you already clarified in the first meeting that uh, our deal is subject to verification of the title now now in the case of inheritances uh, you need to understand this a little bit because this is very common also so so say if somebody died um, and say he had a son a daughter and wife so the property would come into these three people's names so there was no will you know so this would come into into uh, they they become the owners without any deeds now say one of them also dies so then the children and wife or or the spouse of that person they they become the next owners this is this is all very common you know don't be spooked about it it's okay uh but this is something your lawyer really needs to see and make sure because where there is a number of people involved uh, you have to make sure that the entire title is coming to you it is not getting left out so if somebody died the death certificate would be needed and say if it was quite recent say around 2017 or after there would be a surviving member certificate so a surviving member certificate is basically which tells when this person died who were the other people in the family who were left so uh you know that gives you the family details not all of those people in the surviving member certificate would be owners actually you know it also varies i don't want to complicate this but uh, if somebody dies even his mother is a legal heir but father is not <laughs> yeah, it's just interesting it's how a law is but at least the surviving member certificate will give you all the people who uh, were there in the family from there the lawyer can see okay the, all these owners became Uh, then the, all of these surviving members became the new owners all you need to make sure is all the co-owners they sell the property together yeah and if there is any other legal heirs for example uh, one person dies and uh, he has got three children and and two are now selling the property that is a problem you need that right from all the three or if only two are selling then they need to get an noc or a relinquishment deed or whatever your lawyer asked for from the third person it will usually be there actually very few cases come up where they say oh, we don't want to involve our sister because she got so much money already from the father or this brother he never contributed in the business it doesn't matter oh he was not a good guy it doesn't matter he never took care of the, the family still doesn't matter you know you need to look at all of those things uh, now of course there could be a will from the father uh, saying uh, this 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 goes to my children uh, or or whatever it is then you need to maybe take uh, take a uh, what do you call it like a noc or or whatever the lawyer says in that case you could always fight it out in the court if you if you have a registered will and maybe win also it's not a problem but i'm just saying if you're buying a property you need to make sure of all of these things which are there um so so in a nutshell you want the entire uh, transfer to come to you now what if there was a court case in the in the property and and the person uh, who is selling you the property won the case even in that case you have to make sure that the door to restarting the litigation is completely closed meaning like they what if he can file the case again can he do that can he go to the court again 
or was there a settlement which ended everything you know so you get all the case papers and show to that competent lawyer who can verify it the easiest check can be take a bank loan banks go deep into everything they have lawyers whose job it is to check the title they'll check everything for you now if you don't even need a loan you can always get a loan approved and pay a little bit of processing fee but not get it dispersed if you don't want anyways loans are so cheap you get like the not like 7 to 8% uh, interest now it is about 8% but earlier it was even less and it could become less again later on so not a bad thing uh but still i mean you want to see the basic title chain in the meeting when you close a deal you give a token amount uh because that's how you fix the final price and other terms and conditions you should be able to see a little bit like okay yeah this title is there thank you so much for listening to me this was a long video but this is such an important thing and there are so many points in this i could have shortened it do share subscribe with friends family and your enemies why not and pass on a good word you can always like comment uh, and ask me questions whatever you want i am there to answer thank you